Hi, I'm Jordan Klebanoff. I'm an OBGYN resident at Christiana Hospital, and welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. Welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. I'm here with two of my co-residents, Drs. Nicole Roberts and Dr. Ashwini Dokte. And today we're going to talk about intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, which is the most common pregnancy-specific liver disorder occurring typically in the third trimester. This will be a two-part video series on intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, or ICP, where we will review the diagnosis, pathology, and management. So Dr. Dokte has some questions for us today. So why is it important to understand ICP? Well, ICP is one of the most common liver disorders in pregnancy. It affects about 2% of pregnancies. Um, and it's even more common in women who have used assisted reproductive techniques or who are multiple gestations. It's associated with lots of negative outcomes, so preterm delivery, stillbirth, NICU admission. So it's a pretty important topic for us to understand. So what causes ICP? That's a great question, and the exact etiology of ICP is pretty complex. There's some thought to think that partly this is a genetic predisposition. It's also partly thought to be due to the hormones that are a natural part of pregnancy. And what happens is that the bile acids are a normal breakdown product of cholesterol metabolism in the liver. And it's not so much this pathway, that, this pathway that's abnormal. What's abnormal is the transport from the liver of the bile acids to the gallbladder. So as that transport becomes abnormal, the bile acids build up in the liver, and subsequently they get accumulated into the maternal bloodstream, which affects the baby. But don't bile acids get cleared by the placenta? Normally, yes. So in a pregnancy that's not affected by ICP, typically there's a gradient of bile acids between mom and baby that favors baby offloading the bile acids to mom through the placenta. In ICP, because the levels are so much higher in mom, that is altered. So you can't offload it in the same way, and it's harder for the placenta to clear the extra bile acids. Jordan, how is it diagnosed? Typically, the most um, common presenting complaint moms will have will be itching without a rash. And typically, it's on their palms and soles. It's also important to remember that most commonly, this disorder shows up after 30 weeks gestation. It's Another very important thing to do before just assuming that they have ICP is to make sure that you've ruled out any other possible causes of itching. So is it a clinical diagnosis? Not entirely. ICP, while it is partly a clinical diagnosis, needs to be confirmed with mom, with blood tests for mom. So we expect to see abnormal LFTs, we expect to see elevated serum bile acids. Those while helpful in making the diagnosis, do take a while to come back, so we'll often empirically treat while we wait. What are the typical lab abnormalities? The most sensitive and specific lab abnormality that we can test for is maternal bile acid level. One important thing to remember is that maternal bile acids can actually lag up to 15 weeks behind maternal symptoms. So the reason that's important is because if you suspect that a mom may have ICP, and you draw bile acids and they're normal, it doesn't necessarily mean that she doesn't have it. Other lab values that can be abnormal certainly are LFTs. One interesting thing is that there is actually a thought that ALT is more specific for ICP than AST. So that's something to keep in mind when you're actually looking at what's abnormal in your liver function panel. Do higher lab values mean worse disease? With respect to serum bile acids, yes. In normal pregnancy, bile acid levels are between 6 and 14, depending on whether or not mom was fasting at the time of the test. Studies have shown that for every 1 to 2 point rise in bile acids, there is a 1 to 2 percent increased risk of adverse pregnancy outcomes, and most of those studies define severe disease as values over 40. To summarize everything that we spent some time talking about today, um, important points to remember is that ICP is a complex and difficult disorder to understand completely. We know that it can be based partly on clinical diagnosis. Typically, moms will present with itching of the palms and soles. Another thing we didn't mention that's important is that this itching generally is worse at night than it is during the day. It can also be based on lab abnormalities. Specifically, the most sensitive and specific would be abnormal bile acids. But again, remember, these abnormal lab values can lag up to 15 weeks behind a clinical diagnosis. Join us in our next video where we'll talk more about the management of patients with ICP. So why is it important to understand ITP? 
Well, ICP is one I of did. The- <laughs> you did. God damn it. So, so, so how is it diagnosed? You <laughs> just completely asked her and then turned to me at the very end. God damn it. <laughs> All right. So, how is it diagnosed? That's another important thing to remember. Typically what you'll see... <laughs> God damn it.